Thanks for coming back and joining me for the second part of building a custom product with Microvellum Solid Modeling Tools. During this video, I'm going to be working on completing the modifications to this desk and creating a work order for it so it can be processed for production. And now for more Microvellum training. During part one of building this product using Microvellum Solid Modeling Tools, I made it this far. There's still a couple more things to do before it's ready to send to production. Because the wall follows an arc or a curved path, the extruded parts will be oversized when coming off the CNC. You can set how much you want all curved or non planar parts to be oversized in the options under Toolbox Setup. This value will affect the curved part sizes. And now, add the parts from the 2D section drawing and assign the correct smart layers. This message here is referring to this bracket. It's a block reference, and this tool doesn't recognize blocks. So, just hit OK and continue to add the correct layers. Now most of the smart layers I need to use are already in this drawing, but if they aren't, make sure that you add them and set up the correct properties. Once the 3D solids draw, you can go back and select the objects that represent the screw holes. For dowels, or in this situation screw holes, the rectangle should be the length of the dowel or the depth of the hole, and the width needs to match the diameter of a vertical tool in the tool file. You can verify the tools in your list by going to Toolbox Setup and then Options. The common tool diameter is what Toolbox is looking for when applying the holes. And the actual tool diameter is for the machine. So that's why you see these numbers being different. Okay, now back to the drawing. Now the base point was on the inside of the panel for the other products, but for this one, it's on the outside. Now this is because I drew my section drawings facing opposite directions. So I'm just going to need to adjust the horizontal offset of the product to get this in the right spot. Now it's aligning with the ADA section, but because I added scribe to the floor, I also need to move it down three quarters of an inch. So back into the properties of the product, and now adjusting the vertical offset. Okay, that's better. But I don't want that panel to be in between these two walls. So because I'm just working with 3D solids, I can easily remove it and move things around accordingly but I am going to need a leg there, so I'm just going to copy this one and add it back as a new supplemental part. So when the product is off in the Y or Z axis, you can adjust the horizontal and vertical offsets to get it right. But to move the product in the X axis, there is no offset. So I'll go ahead and hide everything except for this construction path and use the AutoCAD Move command to reposition the product over 3 quarters of an inch to make up for that panel. And now that the curved wall is in the right spot, I can see what I need to do to make this ADA section wrap around at four inches. The way I'm gonna do this is by changing the starting offset of the extruded parts. By doing it like this and not with the stretch and lock tool means I can still get machining I need to for the end step. And it won't change back if I redraw it. So I'll do this to the top plate and also to this part I'm calling bottom plate two. And then to make the corner notch. For this, it's best to isolate the parts and use AutoCAD's modeling commands to make the notch. This 2D rectangle is representing the area of the part that I want to keep, and I'll use press pull to get rid of this little bit here. Now the same for the top plate. This rectangle can be used again, but for this one, I have to make sure I select the correct face. You can hold down shift and the center mouse wheel to orbit around, and in case you don't like the keyboard shortcut, you can find the press pull command on the modeling button in the AutoCAD ribbon. Okay, so that's looking good, but I need to add something to the end. For this, I'm gonna copy one of the wall studs and use an alternate profile. I could just remove this last section of the wall stud altogether and add a supplemental part. But by using an alternate profile, I get to keep the properties of the smart layer and the data will still be there in the extruded parts. I'm just gonna to need to use the extruded tools to move it. And for the dado, the vertical part has to extend into the extruded part, or parts, the depth of the dado route. So here I'm just adding another half an inch to the overall part size, and then moving it again with the extruded tools a quarter of an inch into that plate. All right, so that's almost good. But unfortunately, because of the product redrawing, I lost those corner notches. Now, I really should have thought about that and saved the work for the end, or locked the parts to keep them from losing any changes. So I'll have to go ahead and do that again, but no need to make you watch it. I'll skip ahead and 
continue using the extruded tools to stretch the plywood parts to cover up the wall frame. Select the part that you want to stretch, then the correct edge, and pull it to line up with the other parts. Okay, next up is finishing off the end of this wall. And that will be with an alternate profile without a wire chase. And then two more leg panels for some counter support. I like to use this target button to quickly identify the part and make any edits. Right click and choose the new profile. For the end leg panels, I'm gonna start with a 2D rectangle. That will be the thickness and the depth of the part. And after I rotate it into position, I'll use the press pull command again to create the supplemental part. To align with the angle of a top, I find it easiest to use the 2D rotate command and then use the reference option to get the correct angle. And now to make it a 3D solid. Then the AutoCAD copy command to make a second leg panel. The idea here is to have the side and the wall be manually laminated after assembly. So that's why I'm setting the material to three quarter plywood. All right, well, I'm almost ready to add the countertops. But I need to make sure that the subtops are set back from the faces to have enough room for the front edge of the tops. To do this, I'll adjust the start and end offsets of those extruded parts. Now, time to start working on making the countertops. These tops are going to be out of half inch solid surface, and I'm going to send out some parts for the finished edges. The first thing I'll need to do is hide any parts or objects that are in my way. Now it's just a matter of using your AutoCAD skills and tracing the subtops with 2D polylines. Once I have the outlines of the subtops, I can use the offset and trim commands to create closed polylines. Once all the polylines are joined together, I can give myself a little more room. So I'm just gonna move them out of the way and then I'll move them back when they're all done to make sure everything lines up. Now I don't wanna spend too much time on drawing these tops in 2D. The main point of this was just to show you a few things to look out for if you need to do this for your project. The first is using the boundary command. So this is really helpful when you need to create 2D polylines. But just make sure that you have the entire object visible on the screen before selecting it. Otherwise, this happens. After going through the motions of pressing or pulling all the parts I need to for these tops, I wanted to mention also how to properly extrude curved parts so the thickness matches the material selected when using the solid model analyzer. This really isn't an issue on square or rectangular parts because toolbox can rotate it if needed to match the material thickness. But when a part is curved, Thickness is based on the amount it's extruded along the z-axis. That's why for this section of edge buildup, I offset the amount to be three-quarter, and pulling it down the thickness of the solid surface material. If you don't do it this way, you may get an error when analyzing saying the material thickness doesn't match the thickness of the part drawn. Now that the tops are 3D solids, and it seems like I got the size correct, I have two options. One, I can add the tops to the product as supplemental parts, or two, use a solid model analyzer to turn the 3D solids into a microvellum product. I'm gonna go ahead and analyze these separately, but one drawback with that is that the parts in the actual microvellum product won't have any distinguishing part names. Unlike when using smart layers, because the name of the layer can be used for the part in the product. Okay, and then after selecting all the parts to be analyzed, you will need to select a material from the library, and if the material isn't there, a project level material can be created. Give it a name, make sure the thickness is correct, does it have a grain direction, and does the sheet size need to be changed? If it's being used for job costing, the price per sheet can be added here. Just place the products in the drawing and they're ready to be added to a work order for processing. Now for the products in the list so they can also be analyzed and turned into a real microvellum product. Just like other products in the microvellum library, these can be modified through part properties or edit design data. And can be used with other products in the library for a complete office lobby desk. After all the work is done and the customer is given the green light to proceed, these products can now be processed and all the parts optimized for the CNC machine. 
Inside of the processing center, you can open up the nest drawings to take a look at all the nested parts. Each part will have its label and nested on the appropriate material. And this project is now ready for assembly. So thanks for following along with me during this build. And I hope some of the things that I showed you in this video will help with your workflow. Oh, we still got a lot to uncover with Microvellum Toolbox. So be on the lookout for more training content coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.